Once we know that the occupation is illegal and we know that it's subject to international condemnation and it's very costly in terms of lives and money, then we have to ask why Israel continues to maintain the occupation. And the reason is because it intends to annex the territories eventually. For decades, Israel has been colonizing Palestinian land by building settlements on that land. The settlements are in contravention of the Fourth Geneva Convention that forbids the transfer of population into land colonized by illegal force. The settlements are dotted throughout the Palestinian territories and are set up strategically, often on hilltops, to give Israel military control of the land and its natural resources, namely water. The settlements, together with the surrounding land that they have expropriated, control over 40% of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. The Israeli settlements are Jewish-only settlements, and they are linked together by a network of bypass roads that carve up the West Bank, restricting Palestinians' freedom of movement, and that simultaneously link the settlements to Israel proper. The strategic placement of the Israeli settlements and the bypass roads can be described as an Israeli matrix of control over the occupied territories. The purpose of the settlements, the purpose of the bypass roads, is in the end to create a web of control that will make Israel a permanent possessor of the territory and the rights and interests and concerns of the indigenous people of the land, the Palestinians, the big majority, are not of interest here. Given that Israel's goal is eventual annexation of the occupied territories, the settlements, of course, are a means to attaining that goal, but they would appear to be threatening colonies if they were presented in their true light, so better to hide their identity, to sanitize the language that describes them. CNN sent out a memorandum to its staff in the Middle East. In future, Gilo is to be called a neighborhood. The Jewish neighborhood of Gilo on the outskirts of Jerusalem. The Israeli neighborhood Gilo. Gilo, a Jewish neighborhood in East Jerusalem. Now, there's a great deal of difference between a colony, which is what the settlement is, colon, as the French say, and a neighborhood. A settlement, an Israeli settlement, is built for Jews and Jews only on Arab land, and it's illegal against international law. A neighborhood is just a nice, friendly place. This is southern Jerusalem, a quiet neighborhood. And while the only thing beating down on me right now is the rain, bullets frequently rain in this area, which is the reason those Israeli tanks are right back there. So by pressuring journalists into changing the use of words, by making them alter their lexicon, by linguistically changing the narrative story, not only are the journalists kept in, in line, this is, this is the language, this is the, the system of linguistics you must use, but it also successfully takes away from one side in the dispute, the Palestinians, the reasons why they act in the way they do, whether we approve of it or, or say that it's a wicked thing. When we look at the British press, which remains pretty independent of the Israeli public relations machine, you get a very different story about the settlements. They emphasize both the illegality and their vital importance in the conflict. They look like ordinary Israeli neighborhoods, suburban, modern, and comfortable. But the Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip are now the key issue in the conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis. There are something like 200,000 Israelis living on land captured from the Palestinians in the war of 1967. The government knows it's under intense pressure to stop expanding the settlements which are illegal under international law. But the people left with no choice are the Palestinians. They see every new Israeli building on occupied land as a gross violation of their sovereignty, and they insist that the Israelis must stop all building. In contrast to British coverage, in American news coverage, the settlements are downplayed, and questions regarding their legality are rarely raised. In fact, there are times when they're flat out legitimized and defended. Israeli settlements are so interspersed throughout Palestinian territory that a border around them all would be too long to defend. And evacuating Jewish settlements, even those deep inside the territories, is politically impossible, at least for now. What American reports uh, tend to obscure is uh, the fact that uh, the Israeli government has promoted the settlements as part of a strategy. 
The right is in government and armed with bulldozers, expanding in the West Bank and Gaza, staking a claim to the land, making space for new immigrants whose numbers are meant to counter the fast-growing Arab population. The insertion of a large Israeli population in certain areas gives the Israeli government a rationalization for refusing to relinquish control and to give Israel a argument that this uh, part of the occupied territories has become so Israeli, has so many Jews living in it, that it simply has to be annexed to the state of Israel, which is why you can see East Jerusalem completely ringed by a, a pattern of, of uh, heavily fortified Israeli settlements designed to cut East Jerusalem off from the west, rest of the West Bank for the permanent domination and eventual annexation of, at, at the very least, key areas, if not, in the end, the whole thing. 